Hi, it was my birthday a few days ago and my wife got me a nice gift, a sextant. Uh, as you may already know, a sextant is a device for measuring angular distances between objects. And the way it works is pretty simple actually. So you have a scope here, a small scope, which you look through. And when you are looking through it, you see light coming from two different directions. One from straight ahead, through here, I will just leave these filters up. These are just filters uh, so that you don't get blinded by the sun if you're looking directly at it. Uh, so yeah, uh, you can see light coming directly from uh, straight ahead through this. Uh, this is a beam splitter, which uh, reflects about half of the light and lets through about half of the light. So when light is coming from here, about half of it is transmitted to your eye via the scope and half is reflected. And same goes for light coming from this direction. So you have another mirror, an index mirror here. And if light comes from this direction, it is reflected from the index mirror to this beam splitter. And again, about half of it gets reflected to the eye. So then you basically are seeing a double image, uh, an image of what's in front of you overlaid with what got reflected by this index mirror. I can even show you what it looks like. Oh, let me just point this here and you should be seeing my face and the camera at the same time because yeah, it, it basically uh, reflects the image of the camera but also lets the light reflected off my face pass through and you're seeing both at the same time. Now, the index mirror is mounted on this movable arm so you can move it and this way you can look in, in different directions via this index mirror and then you can read the angle between the directions straight ahead and the direction from which you get light via this index mirror here on this scale at the bottom. This scale is in degrees but then you also have this small drum which is scaled in arc minutes and then you can also read fractions of arc minutes, uh, the accuracy as is up to one-fifth of an arc minutes using this smaller scale here. I won't go into the details of that. So now this is useful for example for uh, finding out what the altitude of the sun is above the horizon. To do this you just look straight at the horizon so that uh, the direction straight ahead is the horizon and then you adjust the angle so that the sun is reflected in such a way that you see the sun and the horizon at the same time. And then you can just read the angle from here. And this is useful for navigation because using this angle uh, you can figure out your latitude and longitude. But how to do that exactly I will explain shortly. To be precise what you need is the altitude of the sun above the horizon at noon and the exact time of noon. So from the altitude you figure out the latitude and from the time of noon you figure out the longitude. So that's basically what I did yesterday. I took the sextant outside, I measured the, measured the altitude of the sun, I figured out when noon was, and based on that I figured out my location, which I obviously knew in advance, but I wanted to check uh, how, how good of a result I'll be able to get using the sextant. So here's how I did it. As I've already mentioned, one of the main elements of finding one's position is measuring the altitude of the sun above the horizon. This is usually done by looking at the horizon and then adjusting the index mirror so that you see both the horizon and the sun through the sextant. The issues start when the observer is, for example, like me, in the city and the horizon is obscured by buildings or some trees. In such a case it's impossible to look at the horizon directly, so one has to use some kind of a trick. One of the possibilities is to use a so-called artificial horizon. What is it? Usually it's just a horizontal mirror laid on the ground and the easiest way to get such a mirror is to use some water. A simple bowl with water can be used or, like in my case, just a puddle. But the puddle has the problem that if there is even a slight wind the, there will be ripples on it which decreases the accuracy, but I will discuss that more later. When we have such an artificial horizon we can measure the angle between the direction to the sun and to the reflection of the sun in the artificial horizon. But in such a case the measured angle will be double the altitude of the sun above the horizon, so afterwards we need to divide our result by two. So I went outside, found a suitable puddle and started taking measurements. 
all the measurements were taken between 11 and 12, so I noted the time just as minutes after 11, and you can see there are times between 11.05 and 11.40. The degrees and arc minutes are the direct reading from the sextant, from the degrees from the scale on the bottom that I showed you before, and arc minutes from the drum below the scale. And the altitude is the result from the sextant divided by 2 and converted into fraction before that. Uh, because, as I mentioned, I was measuring the angle between the sun and its reflection, so I got double the altitude in a, as a result and I had to divide the result by 2. This is what the results look like when shown on a graph. As you can see, they are not very accurate. The, it looks as if the sun was going up and down when it should be going up before noon and down after noon. This is because the reflection in the puddle wasn't always clear, because there were ripples, as I mentioned before. So how do we deal with this inaccuracy? Well, we can get the data slightly more accurate by fitting a suitable curve. In this case, it's enough to fit a polynomial of the second degree, and as you can see, it fits fairly nicely. And this polynomial has some coefficients, which we can now use to determine precisely where this polynomial has a maximum and how high was this maximum. So that's what I did. The suitable equations are being taught at schools when talking about quadratic functions. So here we have the coefficients a, b and c, and I remind you that a corresponds to x squared, b is the coefficient at, at x, and c is the free term without any x's. So then the x coordinate of the maximum, so in this case it will be the time of the solar noon, is minus b divided by 2a, so here we get 25.32 something, so we got solar noon at 11.25. And the, the y coordinate of the maximum is minus delta divided by 4a, where delta is the, uh, the coefficient that is being that one calculates when one wants to find the roots of a polynomial of the second degree, b squared minus 4 times a times c. So when we calculate that, we get that the maximum was 17.07, and that's the altitude of the sun above the horizon in degrees at noon. To calculate the position we need two more inputs, and that's solar declination and the equation of time. You can think of them as the coordinates of the point on the surface of the Earth where Sun is in the zenith at noon Greenwich Mean Time at a given day. So for example on the 25th of November at 12 Greenwich Mean Time the Sun was in the zenith at 20 degrees 41 minutes, degree, uh, 41 minutes southern latitude and 3 degrees 16 minutes western longitude. Knowing the altitude of the sun above the horizon at noon, we can figure out how much north or south we are from the latitude where the sun uh, is in the zenith at uh, Greenwich Mean Time noon uh, on the given day. And knowing the exact time of noon, we can figure out how far west or east we are from, from the meridian which passes through that position. Here it might also be worth mentioning where do the values of declination and equation of time come from. So the declination is basically caused by the tilt of the Earth's axis relative to the plane of its orbit around the Sun. Uh, because of that, when, when the Earth orbits the Sun, uh, the Sun is in the zenith uh, above various latitudes, so it's between 23 degrees 27 minutes southern latitude, and we can even see it here and at the end of December, and at the end of June it's at the same latitude but north, and during the year it moves between this northern and southern latitudes. The equation of time, on the other hand, is caused by the slight discrepancy between the actual solar day and the mean solar day of 24 hours, and that's also caused by the tilt of the Earth's axis, well, uh, mostly caused by it, because it, there is also a factor related to the ellipticity, the eccentricity of Earth's orbit. Be and because of the eccentricity, the Earth moves, moves sometimes faster and sometimes slower around the Sun, and that also contributes to this equation of time. But this is basically a topic for a whole separate video. Uh, I won't go into more details right now. If you want, you can try to Google it. There are many good explanations online available for that. The equation of time is also what's behind uh, something known as the analemma, which is the shape you get when photographing the sun every day at exactly the same hour. 
you could expect that it would be a straight line with the sun being higher above the horizon at some days and lower above the horizon in others, but actually what you get is closer to a figure of 8, and that's basically because the sun is sometimes ahead and sometimes behind the solar time due to the equation of time. Uh, you can also google that one if you want more details. So on to the calculations, let's start with the latitude. So we take the known altitude of the sun at noon, which is 17 degrees, and we subtract that from 90, because basically that's how far we are from the place where sun was at the, in the zenith at the time, which, turn, which gives about 72.93 degrees. Now if we add that to the declination, it gives us 52.24 degrees northern latitude. Now it's possible sometimes that uh, there will be latitudes both on southern and northern hemisphere that will give the same altitude above the horizon, but you can figure out which way you are from the, from the point where the sun is in the zenith by knowing whether, the no whether at noon the uh, sun was south of you or north of you. If it was south of you, you are north of the point where it was in the zenith, and it, if it was north from you, you are south from the point where it was in the zenith. Now for longitude. Uh, noon Greenwich Mean Time was 1 p.m. or 13 hour my time, I am GMT plus 1. So, and the solar noon was at 11.25, which is 1.58 hours before noon Greenwich Mean Time. When we multiply that by 15 degrees per hour, we get that we were 23.67 degrees east of the point where sun was in the zenith at Greenwich Mean Time, which, by, which uh, we can now add to the equation of time to get the longitude, which turns out to be 20.4 degrees east. Let's see what it looks like on a map. I marked the point, the measured coordinates with the red pin, and I measured the distance roughly to where I live, and I, uh, I stress that this is only roughly, don't try to find the exact location from this image. It's not exactly where I live, but somewhere close. Anyway, it turns out that I was off by roughly 37 kilometers, which is not that bad, although it should be possible to get a better result, but I blamed the ripples on the paddle for the inaccuracy. I'm, I've actually already ordered a better artificial horizon, which is a box with a, glass, uh, with, with a glass cover that you can fill with water, and the glass cover allows you to see the reflection in the water while protecting the surface of the water from the wind, so I hope to get better results with it. But so far this is what I got. Okay, so that would be it for today, I hope the video was useful. And thank you for your attention and see you next time. Bye.